Okay, this module is 21. This is the last module in the 3 2 material. And then from there, you'll take your review and then your final exam and then move on to college algebra. Okay, so let's start going through these topics. Again, I don't want to record too much in one video just because it kind of gives you an overload of information. So I'll record a few minutes and then um, stop the video and then go to another part. Again, record a few minutes and then that's it. So we'll just keep going along in that pattern. So for module 21, one of the first topics you'll see is solving an equation of the form x squared equals to a number. And we use the square root property. We were doing something very similar to this um, in the previous module, except now it has a different topic, okay? So the same thing, if you wanna get rid of a square root, you apply the square, and if you wanna get rid of a square, you apply the square root. The only thing is, is if there was not a square root at the beginning and you introduced a square root, see, I introduced the square root in red, right? If you do that, you automatically get plus or minus when you take the square root of a number, okay? So the u squared and the square root will cancel, but I will get plus or minus whatever the square root of 64 is. And in this case, it happens to be eight. So I have two answers, positive eight and negative eight that I need to check. So if we check them, we have eight squared equals 64, which is true. And we have negative eight squared equals 64, which is also true because a negative times another negative is a positive. So then both of these answers are correct and are part of my solutions. Now, the next topic is very similar. The only difference is, is that these are not perfect squares, okay? But the same application um, applies here. So to get rid of a square, you take the square root on both sides. Because I introduced the square root, I will get plus or minus for my number. So this will become x equals, and the square root of 33, let's type it in the calculator and see if it simplifies at all. It does not. So this stays the square root of 33. Now remember, you have two answers to check here. So be sure to check them both. Um, you have positive square root of 33, and you have negative square root of 33. Now the square root and the square will cancel each other. And so I do get, um, the 33. Here a negative times a negative will be positive and the square root will cancel the square giving me a positive 33 which is equal to a positive 33. So both check out which means square root of 33 and negative square root of 33 both my solutions. Over here it's the same thing to get rid of the square we take the square root which automatically means I get plus or minus for my number. And I do believe that the square root of 32 does simplify. Yes, it simplifies into four square root of two. So then to check my answers, we're gonna do positive four square root of two and see if that equals 32. And then we're gonna do negative four square root of two and see if that equals 32. Remember, this is a product. When you have a square outside a product, you can apply that square to both factors. And then 14 squared is 16, and square root of two squared, well, these two cancel, and you just end up with two. And is positive six times positive two equal to 32? Yes, it is. So that answer checks out. Let's see about the negative version. So here you would have negative four squared and square root of 2 squared. So this will still be a positive 16 because negative 4 times negative 4 is positive 16. Here the house and the exponent cancel each other out. And again, we get positive 16 times positive 2 does equal positive 32. So both answers check out. So my solution is 4 square root of 2 and negative 4 square root of 2. I have two solutions here.
Okay, I have a few more minutes, um, so I'm going to go ahead and try to cover at least one of these and then maybe cut into the next video for the other. So it says solving a quadratic using the square root property. So just like when we were solving uh, square root equations, we had to isolate the square root before we could um, apply the square on both sides. Well, it's similar if you have a square and you want to apply a root. You need to get the part with the square by itself first before you can take the square root of both sides. So for me here, the first step would be to get the 8 to the other side so that now I have the squared term by itself, I can take the square root of both sides. But again, because I introduced the square root, we are going to get plus or minus our number. So here the exponent and the root will just cancel. I'll get u plus 5. And over here I will get, oops, square root of 8 is 2 square root of 2. Then to continue solving this for u, I would have to minus 5 on both sides. But these are not like terms. This is a constant without a root. This is a constant with a root. They are not like terms. So all I can do is I can write it like this, minus 5. But the more formal way that mathematicians write it is that you always keep the plus or minus in the middle. Okay. So if this is not the only term, then what they do is they write the minus 5 in the front and then the radical afterward. Okay. Um, but essentially what this is is two answers, right? It's u equals negative 5 plus 2 square root of 5, and it's u equal to negative 5 minus 2 square root of 5. So there are two answers here. Um, and if you check both of those answers, so let's check the negative version. Negative 5 plus 2 square root of 5. That's actually the positive version. We'll check this one first. Oh, I forgot to put the plus 5. So I'm plugging this in for u, but I still have a plus 5 that I need to put inside that parentheses. So, let's see. The um, 5 and negative 5 will cancel. So I'll end up with 2 square root of 5 squared. So then I end up with 2 squared, square root of 5 squared, which gives me 4. Oh, I've made an error. I noticed it here. Um, this was 2 square root of 2, but then look what I wrote down. It happens to all of us, right? Our eyes play tricks on us and cause us to write down things funny. It's always good to double and triple check. Um, I failed to double and triple check here, so I have an error. So these should be 2's inside the radical, not 5's. So then that means when the square cancels, I'm going to have a 2 here. And 8 minus 8 does equal 0. So this answer checks out. Now let's do the same thing over here. Now instead of rewriting this, this is just my checking work, right? I can edit this. This is not part of my solution, okay? So the only thing that changes is when I plug in u, there's now a minus 2 square root of 2. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to put a minus. These two terms are still going to cancel, but I'll have a negative 2 square root of 2 here, which means I'll have a negative 2 there. But when you square the negative 2, you still end up with the positive 4. So I still end up with the same result, which means this answer also checks out. So I have two answers, and there's two ways to type in this answer, okay? If you have the plus or minus button inside Alex, then you can type it as one expression, just like this, okay? If Alex has the button enabled so that you can click it. If it does not have that button, then you will have to elaborate on this and expand it out into its two forms. 
So either this one is acceptable or this one is acceptable. Now I'm kind of maxing out on my time here. This video is already over 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop and we'll do this other example in part two.